Right, so I do a lot of these ups and downs shows, and the other day somebody messaged me going, Simon, you're so crap at these. Even an AI chatbot could do better. I was like, all right, that's how I'll start the show. So hello, wrestling fans, and welcome to ROH Review. What a boring name for a show. The show where we break down all the action from the latest Ring of Honor wrestling events. I'm your host, Name, doesn't even know my name, and I'm excited to take you on this journey through some of the best professional wrestling you'll find anywhere in the world. Ring of Honor Wrestling has a reputation for delivering some of the most exciting and innovative matches in the business, from pure wrestling contest to high-flying spectacle. <laughs> ROH has it all, and the latest event was no exception. We saw some of the top stars in the company battle out for championship gold, there wasn't one title on the line, as well as some new faces looking to make a name for themselves. That is true, so let's get started and dive into the action. That was pretty good, I fire myself. But getting more to the point, Samoa Joe kicked off this week's episode of Ring of Honor TV. He wasn't happy. Because Joe felt like Mark Briscoe has totally forgotten what a dominant champion he is. So when they get to Supercard of Honor and they have their match for the TV title, Samoa Joe's going to spank his ass. He definitely didn't say that. It also means he is putting out an open challenge for this evening. Can you imagine if an open challenge was like jury duty? So you're sitting there and all of a sudden someone goes, knocks on the door and says, I'm really sorry, you've got to fight Samoa Joe. You'd be like, no, please, I don't want to fight Samoa Joe. But screw you, you're doing it anyway. This was a timely reminder as well, because then it was time for Tony Nice versus Mark Briscoe. Nice jumped Mark before the bell, which is not obeying the code of honor. So as I told you last week, this should be grounds for demissal. If they're the rules, and you don't obey the rules, somebody should come and kick you right in the bum. So I am introducing this dismissal dart. That's right, it's a stupid counter. So we go, whoop, and it goes up to two. And if you're wondering what goes up to two, it's because somebody else did it last week, but I forgot who it was. However, Tony Nice is going on this list. Respect the code of honor, that's the damn point. The real problem for Briscoe is that Mark Sterling and Josh Woods were at ringside, so you know the deal. They leveled up their MP, and they started casting distraction. I mean, they allowed Tone to push Mark into re the ring post, because the referee <laughs> didn't know what was going on. Josh then grabbed him and suplexed him on the floor. So I'm sorry, given what Ring of Honor is meant to be, I was absolutely disgusted. Mark then tried to go for the Dre driller, but he wasn't able to do it because he was so injured. When Tony and East was like, well, I'm an agile individual. And he tried to hit a moonsault, but he totally missed. Sucks to be here. So they went nuts with chops. They just slapped each other's chest when Briscoe was able to hit the iconoclasm for a near fall. And he also got a brain buster in as well. So I presume that he had looked at Nice's thinking device and was like, no, I don't want that to work anymore. He then tried for the second Jay Diller, but he still couldn't do it. The thing is, Tony Nese was only able to celebrate that for about two seconds, because then Mark Briscoe hit the Spicoli driver, he hit the Froggy Bow, and he did get the one, two, three, and now he can fly into Supercard of Honor, and he's probably going to win. And beating Samoa Joe is quite the victory. This was everything you'd expect, and I suppose a little bit more up. And then the Trust Busters were here. And they're basically the mascots of ROH. As promised last week too, they were indeed taking on Metalik Blake Christian and AR Fox. <laughs> Mark Sterling was then obviously back out here. And I was like, man, man, I hope that you've asked for a raise. You pull in a lot of Dewey. Otherwise, the good guys used their speed to start when the bad guys decided <laughs> we're just going to be mega assholes when they cut them off. Before we get into that, I just want to mention AR Fox. When he was in the ring, he was just going so damn fast. I mean, this guy is really good. I also now want to see him versus Vikingo, because I don't think I could handle it. And it was Metalik that got the lukewarm tag. And you know what he does. He walks the ropes, and then he does flippy shib, because it's 2023. The problem with this was is that Ari Davari was watching all of it, and he stopped the mask man, and he threw him right into the ring apron. And I went on a pilgrimage, and I consulted the wrestling elders, and they didn't tell me... It's the hardest part of the ring. Metalik then tried to fire back with a handspring, but Davari was like, no, and he hit him with this kind of flippy-dippy elbow thingamajig, which also meant that we were stopping Metalik from making the tag. But you know the deal of a tag match. You wait some time, you wait some time, you wait some time, and then boom, it's so hot, baby. Here came AR Fox. As I already mentioned, he just goes mad, and he hits so many cutters, but I appreciate it. If you think you're good at a move, why wouldn't you go for it over and over again? At one point, he was even using human bodies to hit dives when I think Blake Christian felt left out and he hit a dive too. I've already made my 2023 wrestling joke. And I'm doing it again. Sterling was then cast in distraction once more. And if this keeps happening, I'm going to ring up Ring of Honor Management and be like, what are you doing? Which is when Reeves was able to hit an underhook suplex. I mean, come on now. He actually made the pin after this. 
When was the last time that move ever won a match? Around this time when they all looked at each other out, wait a minute, there's six of us. All of a sudden, the tag tracks from Ha went off. We just had move, move, left, right, up, down, centre, your grandma. When AR Fox hit this awesome cutter and finished it off with the 450, one, two, three. And I tell you why that was nice. I could be wrong here. But anytime AR, or R, like a pirate, is on dynamite, I never think he's victorious. Here he was. The embassy also arrived instantly to beat up the good guys because, of course, the good guys have said, we want the six-man title, so that makes all the sense in the world. And I can kind of see how Ring of Honor is constructing its TV. It just wants to give you a bunch of good matches. And who is going to get mad at that? I tell you who. That one guy that's like, well, I wanted a bad match. Makes me so mad. Uh, Sky Blue was then on Ring of Honor. And while I'm pretty sure these shows were pre-taped, what a damn good week she has had. She was also facing Lady Frost, and while we have talked about Lady Frost here on Ups and Downs before, I always want to talk about her name, especially here, because you had Sky Blue versus Lady Frost, so it was like weather and the thing that weather does. I don't even know what that means. Blue also did some arm drags when Lady came back with this massive boot in the corner, and then she started to hit cannonballs. I was like, imagine a wrestler made a mistake and you planned a match in the back and you went, I'm going to hit you with a cannonball. And this person like didn't have experience. They went and fretted in the corner like, but that's going to kill me. How can I survive a cannonball? We are being weird today. It turned out Frost really liked these cannonballs though because she then hit another one off the apron when these two kind of looked at each other and then just booted the other one in the head. I mean, why not? It finished when Sky hit a spinning one of these, but that's when my lady dusted herself off. And she's like, ah, oh, you want to do some flippy ship, do you? And she quite literally cartwheeled into an air raid crash. That was quite good. Frost then went for a mood salt, but Blue didn't want to get hit by one of those, which actually meant on this episode of Ring of Honor, that's 0 for 2. <laughs> when it comes to moon salts, she came back with a crossbody. She hit the code blue, which is a code red, but she calls it the code blue. And she got the one, two, three. And don't forget, she did have Tony Storm pinned on AEW TV. She just got screwed. So I tell you, this Sky Blue is coming of age and getting better every single week we see her. And I like that. It's like homegrown talent climbing the ladder, giving it it up. The matches kept on coming too, because next up it was Rhett Titus and Tracy Williams taking on Roosh and Drillistico. Like two styles coming together. Drillistico and Roosh totally ignored the code of honor. So I get my dart again, whoop, and I throw it, and it goes on these two. Also means we're up to three. I mean, what is the point? What is the point? If I invite you in my house, and I ask you to take your shoes off, and instead you have your dirty clod hoppers, and you mess up my carpet, you ain't gonna hang around. I'll boot you out the window. It did trigger a big old brawl, though, but poor Williams. He got absolutely beat up here and smashed in the head all of the time before he finally suplexed Listico and he made the tag to Titus. Rush also got tagged in, so these two were like, well, I've got a move for you. I'm going to punch you in the face. So the guy was like, ha ha, I'm going to punch him in the face too. Which is when Rhett stopped Rush and hit this massive belly to belly suplex. That's another move I like the name of because literally we call it that as one person's belly touches the other. I mean, why make it complicated? This is when Williams had taken his phoenix down, so he got back in the ring to help his partner. And they basically took Rush's head and just slammed into the mat over and over again like a basketball. And that looked like it was going to work when Drillistico kind of broke up a pin by just falling into it. Maybe he was drunk. The tag clacks and rah then went off again, although it ended wonderfully because Williams speared Rush just as he was about to hit the bull horns when Drillistico just did this massive dive. And then everybody was doing dives, ah, we've talked about it. It did cause separation between the teams, though, when Rush was like, well, wait a minute, everyone is in position for me to do the horns of a ball. He slammed that home. He got it. One, two, three. And I'm kind of interested what we are going to do with this team, because they usually win when they are on Ring of Honor. I guess they're going to get a big push up. I do sometimes think during Ring of Honor shows, man, I would like a bit more sports entertainment, even though I know that's not the thing when it comes to the promotion. But actually, they did kind of then walk into this territory because Caprice Coleman, who is very good at what he does, was having a sit down with Eddie Kingston, and the Ring of Honor champion, Claudio Castagnoli. Now, Claudio tried to be nice here by saying, no, oh, no, Eddie, I shouldn't have said that you're not honorable enough to fight for the Ring of Honor championship. What I should have said is that you're an absolute goober and you don't deserve it. So that's like saying, oh, I'm sorry, I called you an idiot, but I think you're a moron. And Kingston fired back by saying, well, actually, if we go through all the people that have held that championship, they are basically my mentors. So when it comes to my lineage, you're damn right I deserve a shot. I was like, I actually think that's how lineage works, but it sounded great. And you know the deal with Eddie in these scenarios. He's just so damn good in every single word he just spits out. And because of that, he also brought the breast out of Claudio. 
this was a fabulous segment. Because Kingston started to say that Claudio was actually a massive coward because when they were feuding in Shakara, what did he do? He ran off to WWE and now they're sat in the same room and Eddie Kingston wants to fight and what is Claudio doing? He's trying to run away again. Claudio thought that was rich coming from a guy who always quits and oh my gosh, he just went in here, but fine. If he wants to quit again when he faces Claudio Castagnoli, will do the damn match. He then threw in that line that Eddie is the biggest wasted potential he's ever seen. Honestly, so many people say this and just get him right in the ribs. But this is exactly the type of role that Claudio Castagnoli should be doing. And again, Eddie Kingston, as far as I'm concerned, should be all the world champions at one point. I was meant to be world champions. He is that damn good. And I'm excited for this now. Let's get it up. And speaking of the Supercard of Honor pay-per-view, it was then time to carry on everything between the Kingdom and Top Flight. Because we saw what happened last week and what happened on Dynamite when Matt Taven and Mike Bennett basically screwed over Darius and Dante Martin when they could have become the AEW champions. So now we had Taven versus Darius. Good. And the real question does come down to shenanigans, and I have seen a few people talking about this online, because of course we did have Mike Bennett and Maria Kanellis on the outside, and they were just going interference crazy. And also we had a lot of that throughout the show. So on one hand, I'm like, yeah, I get it. Ring of Honor is meant to be pure. But on the other hand, it's wrestling, and wrestling is meant to be entertaining. So you need to do the things to make it fun, otherwise you're never gonna grow your audience. You're just gonna get nerds like me. Look at me, what a mess. But still, it was all about Maria Kanellis just jumping around, which distracted the referee. So Mike Bennett and Matt Taven could just wreck this fall. And for some reason, Dante Martin wasn't at ringside. Now, maybe they mentioned this on commentary and I missed it. I have to make a lot of notes. But he did come out after the fact. So I'm just going to assume he needed the toilet. Matthew also tried to break Darius's back with a backbreaker. But I think Darius Martin was like, look, man. I've been injured a lot over the last year, and I finally got some momentum back. I ain't putting up with this. Because he hit this crazy flatliner back into the ring when he stopped the climax and just smashed out this Spanish fly. And he did it so damn fast, I think somebody should test him to make sure he's human, because I don't think that kind of speed is possible. Damon then returned fire with what I believe is called Just the Tip which is a very strange name for a wrestling move. But after Darius Martin had kicked out of that, he went for a frog splash. But this is Darius's wheelhouse. He got his knees up and basically went for the most devastating move in all of sports entertainment surprise roll up. He only got a two. He was so mad at both these two though, he then took them out with a dive. But as Darius was getting back in the ring, that damn Maria grabbed his leg. He was like, oh, what's going on here? When he walked into the climax, one, two, three and he lost. This is when Dante turned up to stop the kingdom because they were going to beat up Darius Martin, but here's what we can do. We get to the pay-per-view. Top Flight can win, and as I keep saying, let's use Ring of Honor as some kind of a platform to push Top Flight, and they'll have a damn good 2024. The future is bright. Which is when Tony Deppen basically got fed to Brian Cage. After recently being fed to Samoa Joe, He's not having a good time. To be fair, he was far more competitive here. As soon as the bell went ding, 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 he did run at Brian. But as we know, Cage is a big man. So he hit a super kick and then he did that superlex over the top rope back into the ring. Always looks good. He also basically threw Tony around until Deppa was able to hit the lung blower. And no, that doesn't mean he went out to him and went and tried to blow in his lungs. Though actually, if you could do that, I think it would be an effective move. He also smashed him in the face with the knees and hit a double foot stomp. I tell you, the fans kind of bought into this, that it manipulated me a bit. And I was like, oh man, Tony Deppen's going to win. Of course, that was nonsense. It was a good near fall though. And then we had a better one when he went for the most devastating move in all of sports entertainment. But that didn't work either. This is when I realised we haven't talked about the surprise roll up for ages. So over WWE and AEW and Ring of Honor, it's all gone very eerily quiet. This really was like a dad playing with his annoying son though, because then Brian got up and went, nope, I'm done with this. And he hit him with the drill claw and he got the three count. But I like this Tony Deppen. I like Brian Cage. They're just enjoyable folks. The embassy were then back to try and kick the crap out of Tone because that's what they do. When of course, AR Fox, Metalik and Blake Christian were back to get revenge. Although they'd gone escalation crazy because they had weapons. So of course we'll do this match at the pay-per-view and maybe it'll be a no DQ match. Why the flub not? Up. And then we got another damn highlight because Shane Taylor returned to Ring of Honor. Yes. We all know how much he smashed it before and actually we were traveling back in time here because of all the people, he was taking on Silas Young. Fans were super behind Taylor too as he just wrecked Young with his big old shoulder tackle. When of course, because they are basically big men slapping man meat, they just started punching each other right in the face. Some of these blows look nasty. 
No, I'm near. What am I doing? Imagine I tried to have a boxing match like this. Knocked out. I think Shane must have forgotten how wrestling works, though, because he went to do a leg drop on the apron and he missed, which meant his ass area went into the hardest part of the ring. I thought he was done. He also allowed Silas to crush him with his big knee. This is when I started to think, what do I ever do with my knees? Nothing. They kind of just hold me up a bit, whereas some wrestlers are totally obsessed with them. Young was then just dropping elbows and trying to wear Shane down when all of a sudden he came back with this lariat and he hit the sky high. This is me looking at the sky high. It wasn't that high, but it's always such a good move. And I would say more people would do it, but then we'd have to start counting. It didn't work because Young was able to kick out of that when he hit a DDT. So Taylor just came back and he headbutted him. <laughs> I don't know why that made me laugh so much. So I was like, yeah, why not? Silas is no slouch though, so he was able to slam his way back in for this when he went for the Pee Wee plunge, but Shay Taylor didn't want to get hit by that. When somewhat funnily, he then hit him with a big old knee and I'm about to go crazy with knees. When he finished him off with the package pile driver and look, Shane Taylor was super over here and he just has something to him. So I don't know what the future holds, but he should be up at the tippy top of the card. I'm looking up again. We then had more new faces for this version of Ring of Honor because Billy Starks was here. And honestly, she'd been killing it recently. She's everywhere. She was also fighting Miranda Elise. And while I know she's been on Ring of Honor before, I don't know much about her, but that's why I love watching stuff like this. It's always fun being introduced to new wrestlers. Conduct her hands. She is going to have to get the dismissal dart, though, because she basically slapped Billy Starks' hand away when she went for the Code of Honor. So we throw it. Goes up to four. I've forgotten already, this one could get out of control. We then got to dive instantly, so I was chuckling away because I am that guy. But when Billy missed a foot stomp, Miranda grabbed her by the hair and slammed her to the floor. So I can't lie, I'd like more of this in professional wrestling because it makes me feel damn good. Can't do it to me. She then followed it up with the Miranda rights, which is basically that cool Hurricane Rana thing when you slam somebody's face into the mat. But moreover, I just love it when a wrestler takes a move and goes, nope, now I'm just putting my name in front of it. You better deal with it. This is when Starks came back with a big old knee. This is when I started to get really obsessed by them. I don't know why this happens to my brain. I notice weird things, and then I can't unsee it. He also smashed her with a Spicoli driver when Miranda came back with another Rana. Then Billy Starks made my day because she went for a brain buster and she didn't bust her brain. She put the head area into her knee. I was like, yes, I knew this was coming. Sadly, she then missed a senton as Elise did go for the shining wizard. And I'm just going to leave it now because you see what I'm doing here. But Starks got out of the way of that and hit the most devastating move in all of sports entertainment. Once again, it was unsuccessful. I'm getting a bit worried. At least they went for the Miranda rights again, but come on now, you can't go for a move too many times. So instead, Billy busted out a Tombstone Pile Driver, which is also a crazy move. She got the three. So I really do think the ROH women's division has a bunch of talent that hopefully we can craft and turn into a bunch of good stories. I like this. Up. And then what a match we had, because it was Aussie Open taking on Matt Seidel and Christopher Daniels. And you could go to any other single reality on earth and it would still be flubbing amazing. For all the things, it started with Seidel surprising Carl Fletcher with the most devastating move in all of sports entertainment. And once again, I started fretting because it can't be devastating unless it gets some wins and the moment it's doing nothing. When Daniels tagged in and got slammed. Well, Plug Davis was then in and what a few weeks he's had. And he just started laying in some chops. But as we all know, this isn't Christopher Daniels' first rodeo. Because he knocked him over and then lariated him in the back of the head. I don't think that was particularly nice. Matt was then helping out his partner when they quite literally used each other as projectiles to keep Mark Davis down. But Aussie Open are a well oiled team. So as soon as there was some danger, Carl Fletcher tagged himself in and flub me did they go to work. Because they just flattened their opponents on the outside before they did that vertical delayed suplex thing they do. And honestly, I've seen it a few times, but it's always so damn impressive. But when they went for their double cutter thing, Daniels put a stop to that and he flatlined at Davis. He was using all his experience. Sino didn't want to be left out, so he hit this amazing Hurricane Rana as he and Daniels hit this double powerbomb Meteora thing, which was also pretty good. And then it was once again, just go, go, move, move. Where's your Auntie Joan? I just sat there going, <laughs> both these teams are so damn good. That'll do, pig, that'll do. Aussie Open then did land their big cut, but Christopher Daniels broke that up at 2.999, so then he came back with the Blue Thunder Bomb, but we know that move never wins a match, and it didn't hit. When all of a sudden, both teams were going for moves, but the other ones were getting out of the way. So it was like Tetris. 
I take to then plant his side down with the spinning tombstone, which is a silly move. So Christopher Daniels like, oh man, you're going to do that. Well, I'm going to go for the angel's wings. But he wasn't actually able to pull it off because I was the open said no. Because instead, Davis just forearmed the life out of his body before they absolutely crushed him. They hit the Coriolis and they got the three. Now, I have not done this match justice. It was so damn good. And seriously, Aussie Open have got to win the tag team title soon. Otherwise, what are we doing? They are flubbing fantastic. Up. It's also why I was baffled when we did have one match to go, because we had the Samoa Joe Open Challenge. Because I was like, well, it doesn't matter who it is. It's like Kenny Omega or someone. It's not going to be able to match that. As it turned out, that was the point, though, because instead we did do a little bit of sports entertainment. Because his random opponent was Cheeseburger, which was very nice, because he has all the history of Ring of Honor. But he got in there. He tried to take out Samoa Joe. And Joe was like, no, that's not what's happening. He murked him. <laughs> He hit him with the muscle buster, one, two, three. It must have gone about a minute. So he got eaten alive, and yes, that is a pun. I hope cheeseburger doesn't work by the hour. This is when Samoa was going to rip the cheese from the bun, which is the dumbest thing I've ever said, when, of course, out came Mark Briscoe. He chased Samoa Joe away, so we continue to build that angle, and I ain't got no wrong with that. It also turns out, according to social media, that on Supercard of Honor, we are having for Kingo versus Commander for the Mega AAA title, or whatever they call it. And that is going to be so stupid, well, it's worth the 20, 30, 40, 50 bucks, whatever the hell it's going to be. So once again, Ring of Honor does get an up. I know there's no downs. It doesn't mean it was the best show ever, but it does mean there was a bunch of good matches. And I had a good time. Now, please do leave a comment below and let me know what you thought about last night's Ring of Honor. Also, click one of the videos on the screen. It's probably ups and downs. You must support the series. Otherwise, you could die. That's not true. And then like the video, share the video, and subscribe. I think I said that already. My name is indeed Simon Miller. Thank you for joining me always. Have a lovely day. Have a lovely weekend. See you soon.